Uh, well, thank you very much, Marco. It's wonderful to uh, be here. I'm going to give the same speech that I gave last night. So for those of you who were at the dinner last night, this will be the first time you've heard the speech. Uh, it was a busy evening last night. Everyone was having a very good time. And I'm pleased to hear, Marco, that it's just going to carry on with this party tonight. Uh, I want to thank Marco for giving me the chance to speak. It's a great honor for a government minister to be invited to an industry conference. All of you are here to do business. Hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars of business are done at the NOAA conferences. And it's a real achievement, I think, uh, what the NOAA conference has achieved over the last uh, five or so years. And we're very proud indeed to have Marco and his team and all of you come here to London. Uh, but of course, London is the greatest city in the world, so it's no surprise to have you here. And uh, really, what I'm here to do is a bit like uh, some of the startups uh, might be doing. I'm here to pitch to you about how fantastic uh, the British government is and what brilliant ministers they have working with the technology industry. I want to cover all the issues that I think are relevant to both uh, investors and tech companies who might be in the audience. The first and most obvious thing to say, I think, is that we have uh, one of the best tax regimes in the world. We know, you know that we now have uh, the lowest corporation tax in the G7, uh, and we also have fantastic tax regimes for people investing in startups, whether it's the Enterprise Investment Scheme or the Cedars Enterprise Investment Scheme. We've got the patent box, which gives companies an effective 10% tax rate for revenue coming from EU or UK registered patents. And we've also got a fantastic R&D tax regime. I think one of the things that also marks out the UK from other countries is this uh, massive creativity that exists in the UK. So if any of you want to make a film, a cartoon, a high-end television drama, a video game, or put on a play, we also have tax credits for that as well. We're one of the best places in the world to make creative content. The other part of my job is to make sure that you have the digital infrastructure to support your businesses. So we're busily rolling out broadband. We have one of the most successful government-supported broadband schemes in the world. We have something like 75% of the country already accessing super-fast broadband. Under our broadband scheme for areas in rural areas, because some of you may want to uh, go to the countryside for the weekend, uh, we now have passed one and a half million homes today, so that's a huge milestone for us. We also have uh, 4G take-up. We have the fastest 4G take-up uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, we're also supporting small businesses getting access to broadband. We have a voucher scheme for businesses in London and businesses in 21 other major cities uh, around the UK. And we're also uh, pushing out a scheme for public Wi-Fi as well. Many of you will know about Tech City. Tech City has acted as a fantastic beacon for the UK to effectively demonstrate uh, our passion and interest in attracting technology investment. It's worked both to encourage entrepreneurs, but also to establish, uh, to get more established companies to come and invest in the UK. It's also a fantastic test bed for the UK government to have a dialogue with entrepreneurs and technologists. And we learn from the companies in Tech City about the kind of issues you face uh, and the kind of uh, regulations, as it were, that government can either get rid of or reform or introduce to help you build a tech business in the UK. We think it's been so successful that it's, we've now developed out of it a cluster alliance bringing together all the other major cities in the UK which support technology. And last month we launched Tech City in the North uh, in order to uh, show and demonstrate that we have uh, fantastic technology infrastructure all over the country. I think a very good example of what Tech City is doing uh, is now its work in the scale-up area. When we came into government, the focus was all on technology startups. How do we create a climate where people can easily start a technology business? And we've addressed a lot of those issues. Now the debate in the UK is how do you scale up those businesses? Uh, so Tech City UK has put together the Future 50 program, and it provides bespoke support to 50 companies. 
the most promising growth stage tech companies in the UK. And those companies collectively generate more than two billion pounds in revenue, employing over 15,000 people and have delivered 60% growth in the year to date. And we're now opening applications for more companies to join the Future 50, uh, the Future 50 program. And we're also going to announce, uh, TechCity is also announcing shortly a program to help tech startups to upskill to ensure they've got the necessary business skills to complement their technical skills. And we also have the British Business Bank, which is a government sponsored bank, which is planning to invest over 10 billion pounds in the next five years into growing tech businesses. The other key issue, apart from the tax regime uh, and supporting technology and giving you the digital infrastructure is of course skills. I don't think there's any developed country in the world with a big technology base that isn't facing the challenge of skills. Companies are moving so fast, changing so fast, that getting people with the right skills is a real challenge. I think not many people talk enough about how technology is actually going to change the way we do education. And I don't mean by that MOOCs. What I mean is the way that education is now going to have to become much more porous. And business is not just going to be a nice to have to go and have a placement with a business uh, when you're at university or in further education. It's going to become an essential part of your education. Uh, we've put in place long-term plans in the sense of we're the first uh, G20 country to put computer coding actually on our national curriculum in schools with kids learning from primary school onwards. But we're also looking at radically reshaping further and higher education to ensure that kids studying at university and college get the kind of skills uh, we need. So we think there are massive opportunities to do uh, business in the UK. You're also dealing with British citizens themselves who are passionate early adopters of technology. And as you know, we're one of the leading e-commerce nations in the world. We're one of the countries which adopt new technologies most quickly. And we're also a country that looks to the future. So apart from all the reforms we're putting in place to make it a good place to do business, we're looking at what, uh, what is going to have a huge impact uh, in the next few years. And that obviously includes things like smart cities and the Internet of Things. And we've announced, for example, this year, 45 million pounds of government investment into research into the Internet of Things. We've set up two catapults. These are effectively test bed research centers that work with business that are partly funded by business for you to trial uh, your new technologies with them uh, in an environment where you can uh, test bed them and get real results. And that's the Future Cities Catapults, which has already invested 33 million pounds in cities like Glasgow, Bristol, London, and Peterborough, where the Internet of Things is being trialed. Uh, and also the Digital Catapult, which opened last week, which is based in King's Cross deliberately, effectively to be next to the Eurostar terminal. So in the center of London, but also in a central place where a lot of people come in from Europe. And I would urge you to get in touch with them if you've got new technologies that you want to trial uh, and see. We've also invested uh, with German universities and UK universities significant millions into researching 5G. And finally, we have a huge history, obviously, in London of being a great financial hub. So it makes sense for us to be the global center for financial technology. And our chancellor, our finance minister, spoke at the launch of Innovate Finance uh, this year to announce our ambition to lead the world in fintech. We're working with banks to enable the sharing of credit data for SMEs. We're looking at opportunities for digital currencies to create a system that is faster and quicker than traditional payment systems. This is a massively exciting time, it goes without saying, to be involved in technology. The uh, changes, the innovation continue at pace. But I hope, having listened to a few of the things I have to say, you recognize uh, that the UK government is passionate about technology. It's passionate about supporting businesses and investors like you. If you have thoughts and ideas, please send them to me. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed the outline of what we've done so far. Thank you very much.